would you all uh, stand up? I want to bring up uh, Officer Derek Benali with the Chinle Police District, and uh, he's going to do the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the All right, thank you, Officer Benelli. Okay, at this time, we'll be doing the opening prayer uh, for this uh, for this class here. So if we can, remove your hats. Bow your heads. Lord, thank you so much for being here with us today here. And... Um, you know, to, to, to watch these new officers as they become police officers for the Naval Police Department. We pray, we thank you so much for everybody who came in here. We thank you so much for this beautiful weather, sir, uh, and this beautiful day. And I pray, you know, that the, these new officers, you know, remember this day for the rest of their lives, how much sacrifice it took for them from day one till now to be able to go out there and serve our people, Lord, serve your people. That you're with us each day and night, Lord. That you bless these new officers, their families, their children. The sacrifice that the families took, you know, to have them come here at the academy, to be at the academy each day and night throughout, throughout the, the, the 25 weeks that they were there, Lord. We thank you so much for them. We thank you so much for these new officers that they took that, the, that they had this courage and the strength to step forward to serve your people, Lord. And that's, the, that's probably the biggest thing, sir, of why they join, of why they are going to take their oath today to serve and protect. And I pray that you protect them, Lord, because we need you out there. We have to have faith in you, sir. We have to believe in you that you can make some changes. And that's one thing, you know, that I hope these officers do, these new officers that they make some changes to this, to the Naval Police Department to make it better, to make it better. And that we do as much as we can for the people that we serve. And I ask for the full armor of God for each one of these officers, these new officers and their families, Lord. Finally, to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of, of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to take all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people, for yourself, for your family, for your children. And that you guys do as best as you can for everyone. To always know that we are the frontline workers. We are the protectors. We are the warriors, the guardians. And to have that balance, to have respect, to have compassion, and be able to communicate with people, all people, all people that we serve. And that no matter what, you have that courage and strength to stand tall each and every day, new officers. I ask the Lord to bless you and your family and your children and to take care of each other. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Put on your, your trooper hats. All right, next, moving on. Uh, I want to bring up uh, Sergeant Robert Williams, who will be doing the uh, welcome address. Good morning, everyone. I'm Robert Williams. I'm one of the training sergeants out of the Navajo Police Training Academy. I'd like to welcome you this morning to this beautiful venue that the recruits chose, and they put in all this work to put it together for us this morning, the, the Window Rock Tribal Park and Veterans Memorial. Uh, outstanding location, a beautiful day, sun shining upon us, no rain yet. Let's hope it holds off. And on behalf of the officers of the Training Academy, the Navajo Police Department command staff, and all the officers currently in the field with the Navajo Police Department, we'd like to welcome you to this commencement of the 56th graduating class of the Navajo Police Training Academy. We're going to have some guest speakers from the legislative branch and the executive branch uh, come to speak today. But really, it's about these 12 exceptional people here to the left and right of me. It's why we're here and their special guests, the families that made them exceptional people. They were already exceptional when they arrived at the police academy. And that's on the family members out there, the moms, the dads, the grandparents, the aunts, uncles, everybody who made them good people. I had one of these young officers ask me, Sergeant, how do I know if I'm going to be a good officer? So because your family already raised you to be a good person. And before you can be a good officer, you need to be a good person. And every one of these young officers up here are examples of good people. They're dedicated. They're willing to sacrifice for something larger than themselves. They're willing to sacrifice for the people. So we hope you enjoy today's graduation. Take it in. Enjoy it. This only happens once. No matter where they go in their career from here, this is the one time that they're going to have this graduation. It's the one time that they're going to be pinned by a family member. I hope you enjoy it and enjoy your day. Pat yourselves on the back. These are all exceptional people, and I was honored to be able to be their training sergeant. <laughs> Thank you.
I thank you, Officer Williams. Uh, again, you know, kind of reiterate, you know, what Officer or Sergeant Williams, you know, had to say. It's not about us. It's never been about us. It's about the people that we serve. You know, to have that courage to, you know, stand before people so that they don't get hurt. That's your job. You guys are our future leaders for the Naval Police Department. And I want to make sure that we instill that, I guess, confidence and strength in you guys, you know, to pick up that part and move on forward with it. So uh, I want to kind of introduce, you know, all the dignitaries that we have here. I know uh, President uh, Jonathan Nez is away doing some other events. Uh, we have our uh, nomination vice president, um, Mr. Liza here. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have uh, the council delegates, uh, Eugenia Nez, or Eugenia Charles Newton um, here. We have our division director, uh, Jesse Delmar here. We have our cap or our chief of police, Philip Francisco. We have Deputy Daryl Means and all the commanders, the captains, lieutenants, uh, the sergeants. We want to thank every, all the um, instructors who came in, uh, you know, to give time, you know, to teach these officers, the time spent with them. Uh, we have an amazing firearms program. We have a, an amazing defensive tactics program. We have an amazing academy. So we are in the process of starting class 57 in November. So hopefully we start 30 with that class. When these guys started, there was over 100 applicants who submitted their names to become one of us. And out of those 100 applicants, after they got done with their, their physical testing, the pull pat, and the written testing, their background, we started with 22. 22 police applicants with class 56. Now you look at the 12 that made it through all that process. It's pretty intense. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of physical, a lot of uh, written testing that these, these 12 went through to make it. So you look at the 100 that we started with and the 12 that we're graduating today. So the standards that for the Naval Police Academy is, is pretty high up. For those of you that want to join, start running, start working out. Start, you know, going back to your studying and stuff like that to become one of us. So without further ado, I want to bring up uh, Eugenia Charlie, uh, Charles Newton, uh, with Council Gale Delegate with the um, Law and Order Committee. Is she here? There she is. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your guidance, knowledge, you know, being the um, uh, in charge of the law and order committee chairperson. Thank you for being here and supporting our officers here this morning. I want to first thank the uh, Division of Public Safety, the Police Academy here for the invitation. It is an incredible honor to, and a privilege to address the graduating class of new officers here this morning. Today, I do want to say thank you very much. Thank you for stepping up and for serving your community. Thank you for wanting to make a difference on our great Navajo Nation. Thank you for selflessly wanting to protect and serve our Navajo people. Thank you, mothers, fathers, grandparents. Thank you to the spouses out there who have stood behind them, who have supported them as they went through the police academy and as they are sitting here before you here at this time. So thank you, family, for standing behind them. I can say that as a person looking in, well, I should say very clearly that I, I've had my dealings with police officers, but before any rumors start that I have a criminal past, I just want to clarify that I worked closely with officers. When I served in the prosecutor's clinic, 
at the University of Kansas School of Law. And when I worked as a prosecutor in Crown Point, New Mexico, here on the Navajo Nation. And, and quite honestly, I have had my run-ins with police officers. In fact, I, I do have one ticket that I'm not proud of. Uh, it was for an expired tag. I forgot to put my uh, my new uh, year on my on my tag. Um, but it was it was an eventful pullover. I think um, the the officer was very kind to me there in Kansas. Uh, he did write me a ticket, uh, but I was able to uh, take the tag and to prove that I technically had uh, my tag. I just didn't put it on my license plate. So uh, that's my story of my run in with my police o- with a police officer. But I can say that during that time, you know, it was it was great having a conversation with an officer as he talked to me about the importance of his job. Uh, I, I was one of those uh, individuals who did try to get out of it. And I explained to him that I have my tag, but it's just not with me in my car. Uh, but he was doing his job and he made that very clear to me. But when he when he was talking to me, I, I I felt that this officer had a character in him that I think that our officers here um, need to uh, take away, and and I hope that I'm able to to share with you the importance of this these two characters, and that's compassion and empathy. Compassion is a character trait that all officers I think should have. It is the willingness to want to assist others on an emotional level and to selflessly put the needs of others before yourself without ever expecting anything in return. It is understanding and it is being concerned for the individual who you have in front of you. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, you have to be compassionate towards uh, the incident at the time, but there are so many people that are involved when you when you respond to a call that compassion does become an important part of your uh, position and it becomes an important part of serving our Navajo people. Empathy is the other character trait. It is the ability to understand and to share the feelings of others. Many of us develop empathy as we go through life We often see it or we feel it and we understand what that other person is going through. We feel and we know. We know exactly what that person is feeling. We we know exactly what how that person is hurting. That is empathy. A good example I think that we can all relate to is the excitement of having a child and seeing their little arms extend out as they stretch their bodies. The smell of that, that th- this new child that has come into your life. You have these emotions that run through you. As a parent, we have these emotions. So when someone else announces that they have a new child that has been added to their family, we empathize and we feel exactly the same way that they feel at that moment because we remember what it felt like to be in that moment at that time when we were the ones that were hearing that news for the first time. Empathy and compassion do go a long ways for many of our officers. As many of you know, this, uh, this week has been a very emotional week for me. And I feel that the, the addressing our officers today is a godsend because I wonder if the officer who responded to my incident had compassion and empathy. I wonder if things would have been different for me, if things would have been different for my case. Compassion and empathy is such a strong character trait, and I see it in our officers all the time. I hear it when they tell me stories about calls that they responded to. I hear it and I see it when they talk about the families who have been affected. The Law and Order Committee 
hears these stories when we hear about individuals who have been arrested and they're released the next day. I do want to say to Division Director Jesse Delmar, to Chief of Police here at this time, that we are working on this to protect our officers. We stand beside you. We stand in front of you. We stand behind you at the Law and Order Committee. I want to encourage you, officers, to go out to wear your uniform and your badge with honor, to serve our Navajo people with respect, with compassion, with empathy, and with dignity. I know that that is going to be an easy job for all of you. As was already stated, you already come from very good families. So thank you once again for protecting us, for taking up this responsibility, for stepping up to the plate, and for making it known to your communities that this is how you want to serve our Navajo people. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words, ma'am. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that there's no way, you know, that uh, this class, Class 56, you know, could have made it through without the support from the, the president's office, the vice president, and also the council delegates, and also our biggest, I guess, our biggest leaders, you know, for the Naval Police Department, uh, which I'll be bringing up here pretty soon. So um, this gentleman here, I, I cannot say enough about him. You know, he's, he's, he was one of us. He rose to the ranks, and, um, you know, uh, he's done quite a lot for the Division of Public Safety. So I want to bring up Mr. Jesse Delmar, uh, you know, to say some words. He's our division director. He's in charge of our, our police, EMS, fire, and Department of Emergency Management. Yeah, and thank you, Sergeant Billy, for your kind words. I, I really appreciate that. And, and um, thanks to, um, like what the uh, Madam Chair talked about just a while ago, um, talk to you individually, the our new officers that are here with us in Winter Rock this morning. Um, she talked about stepping forward and, and uh, taking upon this job, as all of you know that this is a, a very challenging um, position that what you're taking upon. It takes a while to get here. Um, 12 out of 100 is, is, um, is a high standard. And you're here with us this morning. Thank you very much. And to your, your loved ones too. I didn't have uh, it's um, it's good to see all of you here, uh, being with us here in Winterock this morning. Um, and a, a special thanks to the um, president of the Navajo Nation, uh, the vice president of, of the Navajo Nation, the chief of police, the um, deputy chief too as well. He's over here to my, to our left here. You wanna raise your hand, sir? Uh, deputy, deputy chief um, New and all the staff, uh, to Sergeant Williams, Sergeant Dan, thank you very much. I, I was telling Sergeant Williams earlier this week that um, that I had a conversation one time with, uh, uh, with an FBI supervisor from New Mexico, and he was telling me, I was telling Sergeant Williams this, was that he told me you could, you could tell that there's a difference in, in how the, our officers are trained today than before. So which is coming from a, a different individual from the outside, from a federal agency that uh, tells me a lot. Um, and, and a whole lot of credit to you, our training staff, to the chief of police and the deputy chief. Uh, we, as we continue to build the Navajo Police Department, I think is going in the right direction with the valuable support from the uh, Navajo Nation Council, with the President's Office, with the Law and Order Committee. Um, special thanks to um, 
to the Madam Chair that spoke here just a while ago, too. Uh, I think all of us uh, collectively together, we can make uh, public safety of the Navajo Nation uh, a lot better than before. And it's very crucial, like Sergeant Billy said just a while ago, that, you know, the, it's all about our people bringing the best services, the best product we could ever produce and giving it to the people. So that's what it's about. And um, I, I'm glad for this day. Um, thank you very much for stepping forward. I had a private conversation with the, the folks here that are sitting r right next to me on Monday morning, I think it was. So I sort of gave them a an attaboy that morning and talk to him about a little bit about the, this career that they're taking upon. And I, I, I told him that, that I'm, I'm nearing 40 years myself. And every day I wake up to this job still, uh, I, I still like the job. It's a challenging job, but it's been good to me. It's been very good to me. And I welcome you to the Navajo to Police Department, Navajo Division of Public Safety, and to the Navajo Division of Public Safety Departments, to the Navajo Nation Criminal Investigations Office, to the Fire Department, to EMS, to Emergency Management, um, and, and to um, our Internal Affairs Department. We have a total of uh, and to our corrections department, too. We have probably close to about 800 employees with the Navajo Division of Public Safety. I tell them this, is that we make accomplishments every day, every day with each department, which is I'm so, so proud of. Um, from the outside, you really don't hear much at all about what we do, but these people, they make accomplishments every day, just dealing with people, saving lives, and, and so on. So it, it is a challenging job, especially with working for the Navajo people is especially ch challenging. But we wake up to this, and, and I told the folks here, the reason why I'm here uh, almost 40 years later is because I still love the job. And... Um, let me introduce myself to you. Jesse Delmar Ainge here, though a change. I don't put it in a shaje, the sunny dash a che, though touch he need a shanel and a ray, a western agency, though not the sun the hasna, and on the shant ho. Ado ish ish adosh mande na rande dosh je dosh na thodo and between shnani inli kienta adonaga so that's who I am and um do yat en hit the shni do lete na nos na nos ko na kano kai o ba hiel be ba hiel na a kodis lao bananish Navajo Division of Public Safety bananish. Yon tazot eh. The kui go shi, um, anahot ego a ede yit na kre, a ede bit ne kre. A shin so ede ne, ne cho cho wash ne every day. Nde e ya, bin it long e ya, a kut a e nhi nanish il eh, da kui che. So, a kut a ne cho ha si to le to, e he he la. Thank you, Mr. Delmar. Thank you so much, you know, for your leadership, uh, you know, for the Division of Public Safety. Uh, next, I want to bring up to you is our nomination vice president, Mr. Myron Lizer. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shay Myron Lizer, nomination vice president, Comanche Nishle, Tohana Bashes Chin. It's good to be with you all this morning on this very, very beautiful day. I have a new hero, I must admit. A gentleman who sang the Star Spangled Banner gave me chills. I appreciate that. It takes a lot of courage to come up and sing. But when you love something, 
you'll do whatever you can. I believe that gentleman loves this country, and we all do, and so I appreciate that. Thank you. Not been a, uh, today we have 12. We have 12. We've just heard it well chronicled. 12. We have finished. Run the race and finish the course. Congratulations. You know, 12 is a symbol of God's will and power. Matthew 5, 9 even says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You know, recently on 9-11, we all reflected on that fateful day. We saw images of police officers assisting and protecting, running into harm's way for the benefit of those that they served. Someday soon, God forbid, but it's inevitable that you all will run into harm's way. You'll join those first responders entering into the prestigious and exclusive ranks of those who serve and protect for your sacrifice. We are all extremely grateful. This day is about you. Take it all in. Remember this day when those days of waking up or going into the night shift Make it hard. There's a song out there that mentions the weight of that badge. And you'll reflect. And you'll ponder for a moment, if all be it for a moment, is this weight too heavy? May this day be the memory in your mind that propels you forward into that shift with the prayers of all these that are with us today and your family those prayers will continue to push you out of that chair out of that seat after you fasten those boots and after there you've risen and you put on that hat I want to say a prayer for you all, a prayer for protection and safety of you and your family, if you would indulge me. Lord, I pray your emotional, physical, and spiritual protection over their kids and their grandkids, Lord, to keep evil far from them. Help them to trust you as their refuge and strength. Lord, I pray you will guard their minds into, from harmful instruction and grant them discernment to recognize truth. Lord, I pray you will make them strong and courageous in the presence of danger, recognizing that you give them the strength and ability to overcome and will set right all injustice and wrong one day. Help them, Lord, to find rest in your shadow as they live in the spiritual shelter that you provide for them. Let them know that the only safe place is in Jesus and that their home on earth is only temporary. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise and we ask for protection on them. And in this pandemic, Father, may we be reminded in Psalm 91 that though a thousand fall at my left hand and 10,000 on my right, it shall not come near these 12. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. God. Amen and amen. If you want to pray for these leaders here, these protectors, these servers, then please send up prayers daily, if not hourly. Whenever they're on your mind, whenever you pass that white unit on the highways and the byways of the Netra. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those words and the prayer. And, you know, Class 56, this is a hard life. You know what you guys signed up for. You know, just like uh, Vice President talked about the weight of the badge. When you guys get your badge, 
feel how light that badge is. It's not made of gold. You know, the badge is not going to protect you. But, you know, the, the faith that you guys have, you know, in each other, in our people, you know, that's what makes the difference. You know, we're servants. We are supposed to, we are to serve and protect. Never forget that. Never forget that you're a servant, that you serve people each and every day and night to make a difference in that person's life. We remember our, um, the women that we have lost, our grandmothers, our mothers, our daughters, our sisters, with this missing and, uh, missing and murdered indigenous women, that we remember them, that we do as much as we can for them to, to make sure that you know, justice is done, that we find out you know, who are we. We remember the officers that we lost you know, since we, we, we started, Esther Charlie, Michael Lee, Mario St. Germain, Leander Frank, Lamar Martin, Houston Largo, Alex Yazzie, Daryl Curley, Samuel Redhouse, Ernest Montoya, Winston Sinfit, Filford, Esther Torricini, Husky Jean, Burton Begay, Roy Stanley, Andy Begay, Lauren Whitehat, Gorman James, and Huska Thompson. This world is a, a, a more dangerous world than before. We had some of the new officers who have graduated from 52, 53, 54, 55, who have already been involved in some shootings. And the courage and the strength, you know, to go through things like that. We talk about, you guys are the ones who run to the sound of gunfire. You guys are the ones who will run into burning houses and burning vehicles just like Jonathan Yazzie with the Chinle Police District, an officer with Chinle, running into a Hogan and pulling two people out and performing CPR on them. That's what we do. We are the ones that do these things day and night. So whenever you guys get, whenever that badge gets heavy, look at it, but you know, stand strong and have courage and to continue fight, you know, for what we believe in, what we serve. All right, so uh, next one, um, what we're going to do is um, President Jonathan Nez is going to do a virtual address, uh, you know, to, to the uh, recruits, uh, to police officers and to everybody here. So I'll go ahead and turn everything over to his staff. Go ahead, sir. All right. Well, thank you, Eli. Thank you, uh, Sergeant. And thank you to our leadership for their address, their addresses to the class 56. Uh, this week, we are celebrating their graduation. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, after 25 challenging weeks, uh, you all are uh, graduating uh, this day from the Navajo Police Training Academy. Uh, to ensure compliance, we are doing this all virtually, but those of you that are listening on the World Wide Web, we uh, come together today to say thank you to our men and women in uniform that have been on the front lines of this COVID-19 and since time immemorial. 
and since the start of our Navajo Police Department. These men and women have uh, been on the front lines, have been helping out our Navajo citizens throughout these difficult times. And we say thank you to them. Our Navajo people, I challenge you to say thank you to our officers when you are traveling throughout the Navajo Nation. You know, I want to say a special thank you, too, as well, to our Navajo Nation Office of the President, Vice President, Executive Protection Services, our EPS, who have helped protect this office, the office holder, on behalf of the Navajo people. You know, today, the Navajo Police Department officers that are graduating, Elijah McCoy, Kianta District, William Smith, Delk, J.C. Ruin, Chinle District, Gavin Watchman, Window Rock District, Caitlin Morris, Delcon District, Anthony Vasillo, Window Rock District, Siebert Vanderveer, Crown Point District, Shane Davis, Tiba City District, Tuli Lincoln, Window Rock District, Pernell Nye, Crown Point District, Gilbert Rogers Jr., Kianta District, Kevin Charlie, Chinle District. Congratulations, our warriors that have taken the oath, that will be taking the oath, to protect and serve our Navajo. We've gone through a lot throughout this 18 months of COVID-19. I know our Navajo people are beginning to get restless because, you know, we've been cooped up at our homes. I'm hoping that our Navajo people have been tending to their livestock or farming during this time. There's a lot of work at the house. So our kids shouldn't say it's boring at home. Many of us have grew up, and I'm here in Flagstaff, Arizona, at the, the Bozba Conference. Speak, spoke to many of the educators. And the challenge there, and the challenge to our Navajo people is to continue to pass down our way of life teaching, our cultural teaching, our traditional teaching, and even our language to the next generation. And the teaching that I want to bring to the forefront is the teaching of respecting people around you, our five finger beings. And the Hotasachidan, the <laughs>
Kini wenn wir messen die Zähne, nur bei meinem Kino, geht auf die Kordaufe, den Schrott. Einzelne, Kordaufe, Schliff. Der Schliff ist hier nicht mehr. Der Herr, der doch noch, die Name ist auf der Fahrer, wenn sie nicht mehr schön. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Rado nan tine e ya da niya. O da ha ishin pana asye he. O ya te he. Panda al te he. Nihis ya to asine. You never care for kao ha no. Shumasani he. Akhut a. A nesha che kui yi la no. Pan tazi ke so na taani che zon. Ha ila a te ishni la. Di ya ishni he. Di kosin tsari na has e tsakta. Hey, that's an artist, isn't it? It's not an artist, yes. I can't do TV, that's a kiss, oh yeah. This is the thing, how it's all going to be, because the guy will be here, how to have this, big, how to have this, it's going to be here, how to have this, it's going to be here, how to have this, it's going to be here, 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 but he knows that nature had a young kid at the end of the skin of him. He wants that kiss. So he had many people who didn't need it, but no, they had that kid. But he did not say, he said, 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 and to conclude, uh, I want to say to our new uh, police officers, shortly, once you get that badge pinned on you by your family members, take a big picture of graduates. Uh, who got you there? It's not just your immediate family. It's all our ancestors since it's the beginning of time, time and moment, to the long walk. They pray for us all the way into the day for our success. We celebrate your success today, police officers. Jesse Delmar, Chief Francisco, and all the uh, captains, the sergeants, the lieutenants, Police officers there that at the Navajo Police Department, thank you so much for your leadership. We commend you. We continue to support you. And we want to see great and mighty things happen here on the Navajo Nation. Through our leadership that has spoken today from Chair Eugenia New to Vice President uh, Byron Lizer. Leadership to have a vision for our Navajo people. Take care of yourself throughout this COVID 19. Thank you, Jesse Delmar. Thank you, Chief Francisco, for an outstanding job in reforming the police department. It'll take time, yes. But with the prayers of our Navajo people, we will succeed to have a top notch, state of the art police department, biggest nation in the world. Great Navajo. God bless you and God bless our great Navajo nation. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, President Nez, you know, for your words and your leadership and your support for the Navajo Police Department and for Class 56. Um, this past year, you know, was a, a very rough year for all of us, for the Navajo Nation and for the frontline officers. Uh, the EMS, uh, the people at the hospitals, uh, our students, our Navajo students, our elementary, middle school, high school students, that what they went through with COVID-19 and what we're continuing to go through with COVID-19. And then the uh, Delta variant. When, I, when, when it started up in Chilchimpito, I was assigned to take, that, take, care, to take care of that area and to patrol that area. Way at the beginning, we only lost about three or four people 
Now we've lost a lot of people. We must remember them. The people that we lost. We lost two officers to COVID-19. Esther Charlie and Michael Lee. Um, and, you know, that's just working together. And that's just moving on, you know, to continue supporting the Navajo Nation on what we need to do to make sure that our people are safe. That's the bottom line. That's for everybody, not just for the officers, for EMS, for the firefighters, for the people that work in the, in the hospitals, the nurses and the doctors, our school, both going back into in-person teaching, uh, the teachers, the, the staff, the school administrators, all these people. We need to come together to be able to take care of our people. And that starts with this. It starts with this. And I want to commend, you know, the Navajo Nation you know, for stepping up and continuing on with that. And, you know, that's just the way it is these days. So without further ado, this gentleman that I'm going to uh, bring up here uh, came to us probably like a little bit over four months ago. He came to us from uh, Farmington and San Juan uh, Sheriff's Department. And, um, you know, since the time that he's been here, uh, this gentleman is in charge of our Naval Police Training Academy in Chin Lee. So he's our lieutenant, you know, that has come over to us. And since then, you know, he's, you know, laid the foundation on how the academy should be on the trainings, the standards for our, our uh, recruits when they come into the academy. Uh, and this gentleman uh, was a Marine. He was a sniper uh, in the Marines. So he has the military and then he has the law enforcement background, you know, to, to do what he needs to do at the academy. So I want to bring up uh, Lieutenant Donnie Lee and he'll be doing the awards for the uh, recruits, class 56. Thank you, Sergeant Billy. Uh, good morning. I'm Donnie Key. I'm the training commander at the Navajo Police Training Academy um, and uh, am responsible for uh, the training academy, its function, daily function, as well as all the other things associated uh, with the academy itself. And so I've been with Class 56 um, since I think right around week six or seven, I think, is when, when we. Uh, when we uh, when I joined uh, the training academy there, um, and so as part of the training academy, um, we we promote a lot of competitiveness uh, with the training academy. The competitiveness that we promote provides the recruits the ability to compete with each other, to try harder, as well as to push one another and lend uh, some motivation to each other um, in extending it. And so. Through that competitiveness and the competitive nature of the academy, we have the ability to recognize um, some people for uh, good jobs in a couple of different areas. And so uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to recognize the recruits who showed outstanding um, performance as well as excellence in these specific areas. And so the awards that we're going to be presenting today are going to be uh, for several reasons. So the purpose of the awards program is to promote excellence and team spirit among recruits. There are four awards awarded uh, while in the academy. The first being the academic award, the physical fitness award, the firearms award, and the honor recruit. And so the physical fitness award this award is presented to the recruit who achieves the highest overall physical conditioning score for their respective class. For class 56, if I could get Sergeant uh, Dan, if you could come up and assist with this. And so for the physical fitness award uh, for class 56, we'll go to recruit Gilbert Rogers Jr of the Kienta District.
Gilbert Rogers is very, very physically fit individual, as you can see. He, uh, the competitiveness for that award in itself was very, very close this go around. We, uh, we really placed an emphasis on the physical fitness portion of our academy, and it, it's going to pay off in the long run. Next, after the physical fitness award, is the firearms award. The firearms award. This award is presented to the recruit who achieves the highest overall firearm score for their respective class. This is their overall average between their day and nighttime handgun qualification scores. For class 56, coming all the way from the Chin Lee District, this award goes to recruit Kevin Charlie. Good job, Kevin. The next award is presented is for the academic award. This award is presented to the recruit who achieves the highest overall grade point average for their respective class. This award for recruit academy class 56 is presented to recruit William Smith from the Dilcon district. Good job, William. And the final award for the Academy is the Honor Recruit Award. This award is presented to the recruit who, in the opinion of their classmates, has demonstrated the values of the Navajo Police Department above and beyond all others. These traits include, but are not limited to, reliability, responsiveness, trustworthiness, motivation, determination, integrity, leadership, and followership. For class, recruit class 56, this honor recruit award is being presented to recruit Kevin the Colonel Charlie from Chinle District. Good job, Mr. Charlie. So that is the awards for our class at this time. I will like to uh, close out my portion of this with the fact that uh, I've spent a great deal of time with these soon-to-be officers. I can tell you that without a doubt, and I've told them this on numerous occasions, that there are two things that I never doubt that I've seen that in their performance and in their attitudes is one thing that I never questioned was their integrity as well as their dedication to the job and I and I wish you the best of luck and I hope everybody goes forward and has a great great uh, law enforcement career and so with that I will turn this back over to Sergeant Billy thank you thank you sir thank you sir for your leadership at the Academy um, Kevin why do they call you Colonel is it because uh, you love Kentucky Fried Chicken or I'm thinking that. But each one of these guys had nicknames for each other, you know, throughout the academy, you know, from day one. And I want to thank, you know, you guys that received the awards. A lot of work. A lot of work. Day one, you know, the first week that they at the academy, the following Monday, they have a written exam. And it's like that throughout the whole academy. Every Monday that they come in, they have a written exam that they have to pass. The first time that they, they fail a test, they're on academic probation. The second time is that they get released. 
So those standards, you know, as far as the written, the, the testing part for our academy is pretty strict. When I came on, we had revolvers, six shooters. Now these guys, uh, class 52 on the class 56 here, they, they go through their rifle training, they go through shotgun training, and then we have our Glocks, that, that our sidearm that we carry. So the amount of equipment that has changed, you know, since I first started till now, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big progress, you know, for our department. So, you know, kudos, you know, to each one of you guys, you know, who received the award and all of you guys, you know, who are graduating here. So, um, I want to bring up this gentleman here. He's uh, one of the, one, it's going to be one of our new officers. Uh, he's going to be do, doing the class speech. Um, when we started the, one thing that Chief Francisco has done is for a lot of years, you know, it was the police officers who conducted the background investigations who did the recruit drives for our department. Now, under his leadership, we have the civilian recruiting and background adjudicating pr program. So you have a gentleman right there in the blue shirt, Rodney Nez, he's our civilian adjudicator. So he's the one that, yeah or nays, you know, these applicants that, you know, who apply for us. And then we have our background investigators, uh, Sean Marie Shirley. Uh, we have Miranda Spencer, who was a captain with the Gallup Police Department. Now she's a one of our background investigators. You have Carla Morgan, who's also a background investigator. And you have Grant Skeet, who's also the background investigators. So that's the leadership that Chief Francisco has developed within our department to put, to start that with our department so that we can, you know, keep on moving on with uh, our background, our recruiting program for Navajo Police Department. So uh, I want to thank you guys, you know, for being here. So with that, I want to bring up uh, Mr. Uh, new Officer William Smith. So when we seen the background, uh, the application for uh, William, found out that he was... Uh, he was with the Foreign Legion, the French Foreign Legion. And I was like, what? You know, we have, you know, we have officers, you know, who are, have been in the Marines, Air Force, Navy, and Army. We have a lot of veterans, you know, f with our department. And I always say that, you know, a very good officer, if they have military experience, you know, they have that leadership, they have that discipline. So, Mr. Smith, if I can bring, have you come up? Yate Abene, She William Smith, Yenshne Nakaidene Nishle, Belagana Bashichin, Nakaidene Dashiche, Belagana Desheshnela. Good morning, everyone. I am William Smith. I would like to take a few moments to speak with you about my experiences and the things I have learned here at the Navajo Police Training Academy these past six months. I come from a small town far in southern Arizona called Rio Rico. Growing up, I always wanted to explore the world beyond my small town to push myself into situations that would force me to grow as an individual and to do something meaningful with my life, to do something that would make a positive difference in the world. Fortunately, I have wonderful parents that encourage me to, do, to have these very ideals as well. They fa sacrificed everything to ensure that my brother and I would have a good life and to have the opportunity to enrich ourselves and become productive members of society. They pushed us to challenge ourselves, cho to choose the past less traveled, and to make an impact. It is that very love of challenge that has afforded me the opportunity to have some very unique experiences in life, and for that I will be eternally grateful to them. Before taking my first steps on the path to becoming an officer with the Navajo Police Department, I had the unique opportunity to serve as a combat medic in the French Foreign Legion for five years. I was able to travel all over the world, meet new people, and experience new cultures. It is from this, ex it is from this experience that I began to love learning new cultures. I learned of the Navajo Police Department, oddly enough, from reading a series of novels about it by Tony Hillerman. It is from these stories that I began to become enchanted with the landscape and the mystery of 
and culture of the Navajo people. I was enthralled by a land and a people that are at once mysterious and enchanting. I was excited to begin working as an officer and to learn a new language, a new culture, and to become a member of an exciting and wonderful new community. I was expecting adventure. What came to fruition was so much more. When I first arrived at the academy, I did not know my way around, did not know anyone, I did not even know how to act. I was a stranger in a strange land. I was met, however, with nothing but the utmost hospitality and kindness. I did not have any place to live. My home was hundreds of miles away, and I had been living out of hotels for a good while. I spoke with the wonderful training staff at the academy about my situation, expecting to be told to figure out my problems for myself. Instead, I was treated like nothing short of family, like a son that had been away for a long time and was finally returning home. Captain Yazi went out of his way to inquire all around for housing for me, eventually allowing me to stay at the academy for several weeks during our days off until I was able to get my feet under me and to find a place to stay. Sergeant Williams and Sergeant Dan, our training sergeants, ensured that my stay there was comfortable and saw to it that I did not want for anything. While at the academy, I have met some of the most wonderful people I have ever met. My classmates, the amazing future officers that are here before you today, have become so much more to me than just fellow officers. They have become family. There are a few of them that I would like to mention in particular, both for their acts of kindness and warmth and for their immense help that they have given me in order to assure that we made it through the academy. In the very first few weeks, I had a serious mechanical issue with my vehicle. I had no way of getting it to a mechanic as the nearest one was almost three hours away. Cornelio and I, whom I hardly knew, did not hesitate one moment to help me. He drove nonstop throughout the night without sleep to arrange with his family for a flatbed to load my vehicle and take me to Gallup, New Mexico. He was there the very next day with another classmate and friend, Gilbert Rogers, and together they helped me load up my vehicle and accompanied me to the nearest mechanic and ensured that I made it back safely. Cornel was also gracious enough to take me back when it was ready and to open up his house for me to stay the weekend on several occasions, making me feel at home and ensuring that I did not die of boredom those first several weeks. I must also make a very special mention of my roommates from room one, Gilbert Rogers, Shane Davis, Cybert Vandiver, and J.C. Roan. When they first met me, I was a loud, rambunctious, and honestly weird individual. They didn't let that phase them one bit. We soon became very close and opened up to each other in a very quick fashion. We became more than just roommates, more than just friends. We were all going through a very trying and monumental time in our lives, and we, we still had time to look out for each other. There are some very dark and trying times as each of us were not only dealing with the rigors of academy life and learning to become police officers, but we were also dealing with our individual problems. This did not let any of them phase them and each and every one of them were there for each other to help each other through our tribulations. No matter the time of day or what they had going on in their lives, they would drop anything in an instant to lend a helping hand or give an encouraging word. I can, I can easily say that without them, I would not have made it through the academy. Thank you guys, I love you. Then there are recruit training officers, Officer Jose Oliva, Officer Shannon Johnson, and Officer Marlena Sotsi. They took time out of their careers to ensure that we had successful training and mentoring in order to guide us along the path and mold us into successful police officers. Their knowledge, advice, and kind words in, in times of need ensured our success. The Navajo De Police Department was founded in 1868. It began as a force that was undermanned and under-equipped, yet still performed the monumental task given to it admirably. Fast forward to the present day, and the department is now approximately 200 officers strong fielding state-of-the-art equipment to ensure the protection of the people. We in Class 56 are playing an important role th in this as well. 
having received extensive training in order to deal with the unique challenges of policing in the 21st century. As for the future of the department, it is increasing recruitment efforts, receiving more funding, opening up more training opportunities, and is looking to increase its ranks by over 500 officers in the years to come, thus allowing for shorter response times, better coverage, and a closer relationship with the community. In closing, I would like to say that I came to the Navajo Nation expecting an exciting career and an adventure. But what, I've, what I have gained thus far is so much more than just a job and a fun experience. I have gained a wonderful family and a sense of community far above anything I could ever imagine. Thank you, staff. And most of all, thank you, Class 56, for the warmth and love and momentous opportunity of a lifetime you have afforded me. Stay sharp, Class 56. I look forward to serving with you on the road for a long time to come. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, William. You know, the, um, you know just uh, Class 56, you know, one time I, I came out and they're doing their, uh, you know, their calisthenics and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, when they started, uh, you know, doing, you know, counting the repetitions of each movement, they were counting in Navajo, all of them. And, uh, you know, the tradition that we have, you know, for our department since we begun to where it is now, the traditions, all those officers, you know, that have come before us, who have left us, and now we have 12 that are going to be mo moving forward. The patch that we wear, the tradition, the thinking, you know, from our people, you know, who thought about this police patch. The shape of this patch is a Tiel Navajo bun. My grandparents, uh, uh, Che, you know, he had a Navajo bun. So that's the shape of the Navajo police patch. The colors, the green stands for the pasture, the hay, the grass, you know, for our livestock. And then you have the, the blind lady of justice. You have the year 1868 when the treaty was signed. That's on here. And then you have all the arrowheads, the arrowheads that represents all the states in the United States. And then you have the, the, the gold or the yellow. That's our Tudadin that we pray in the morning, when we say our prayers in the morning, this is our protection. This is who we are. We're the Navajo police. So, you know, that's one thing that's instilled with these recruits is their traditions, you know, where they came from, who we are as Navajos. That's what we do. And there might come a time, you know, where we have to lay our lives down for someone who we do not know. But that's a given. That's what we signed up for. And, um, you know, that's the reality it is these days. So, um, before we go, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and continue moving on. Uh, this gentleman, you know, uh, being in law enforcement, for, in other police for a lot of years, you know, there was a time where we never had a chief of police. And we only delegated captains, you know, to be delegated chiefs, you know, for a long time. A long time. Until this gentleman here came to us to apply with us to be our chief of police. And I'd say close to five years now, you know, he's been with us. And, you know, he started with the, the tenants for, for us, for the Naval Police Department, to be reliable to be responsive and to be trustworthy so that's that's what we live by and with that having compassion respect communicating with people when you see everything that's going on in the world united states with people with the riots with uh people you know wanting to defund the novel or the law enforcement throughout the united states you know what i tell these guys is you know it starts with us how we do our job that we need to have respect, compassion, and be able to communicate with our people. And that's what we should, we should be doing. We shouldn't see colors with all the division that's going on, with everything that's going on with racism. And I'm talking to the public too. 
that it starts with us, each one of us, law enforcement, EMS, firefighters, with the public, with the novel people. We're not supposed to see color as law enforcement officers. We're not supposed to see color. We're not supposed to see the color of a person's skin. So I challenge each one of you to join us to make those changes so that we have respect, love, so we're able to take care of our people, no matter what kind of walks, what kind of race that we have out there that come into our lives to inspire and motivate. Every day, inspire and motivate your children to become leaders, to make those changes in our Navajo Nation, to step up as our vice president, our council delegate, our president, our chief, our division director, all Miss Navajo Nation, Miss Navajo Nation, to make those changes. And it falls on each one, each one of us, not just a few, but everybody here, everybody across the Navajo Nation, everybody across the United States, it starts with us. And we need to do that or else we'll fail. But that's on us. That's on each one of us. So this, this uh, gentleman, and I have a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, he's made some changes in, in our department uh, for the better, for the better. And uh, I want to bring up our chief of police, Nava Nation Department of Public Safety, or Division of our Police Department, Chief Philip Francisco. Uh, I am uh, Philip Francisco. I am the Chief of Police for Navajo Police Department. I've had the pleasure of serving in leading department um, for five years now. So it's uh, been an honor. It's been a lot of work, but I'm, I'm really proud of everything we've accomplished so far. So I'm uh, Billy Gunn. I'm born for Hashkishni and Tonichi. I uh, come from Farmington, New Mexico. I have been in law enforcement for 22 years. Just lost my paper. All right, I found it, sorry. So it's always hard to kind of follow all these speakers, and I've, I say this all the time, but I usually have to play clean up at the very end. And sometimes, you know, I plan to say certain things, but everybody takes, uh, you know, those, those topics and uh, says something about it. But that kind of goes to what my goal is. My goal is really to work myself out of a job completely, you know, because my staff, they know what I'm going to say. They know what, you know, my ideas are for the department. And even our leaders, they know my vision. So they talk about it before I even get a chance to. So that's my job. And as you can see, you know, I was pretty involved in a lot of the police academy graduations from the beginning. I had almost no involvement in putting this event on today. So it goes to show that I am working my way out of a job because my staff knows exactly what needs to be done and they take passion. As you can hear Sergeant Billy, his passion for what the department is and where it's going is pretty pretty high up there. Um, so today is about these recruits and their accomplishments and what they have done. And they're going from recruit and very, very soon, as soon as they get sworn in and a badge pinned on the uniform, they will be police officers. This is something you need to remember for the rest of your life. And I'm sure you will. The day you go from civilian to a police officer, wearing this uniform is something very unique. Uh, you'll see changes. And I'm sure you already have seen the changes. You know, you go from transitioning to a police officer, people see you different. They treat you different. You carry yourself different. You become a different person. You're a leader. And that's what I want to talk about too is leadership. My goal is for every officer, every person in my department, you know, civilian or not, they're, they're leaders. We have a unique position in our community. Everybody will look at you for answers. Your family will start looking at you for answers. Everybody. And that's very, you should be very proud of that and take advantage of that because if you, you take that and you embrace that and you learn and you take yourself 
and be a leader from the very beginning, it'll take you a long way, even outside the police department, all the way up to the top. So I just want you to remember that. This, this I want you to be leaders, and we're going to train you to be leaders. It's just not a police officer from this day forward. So this is a new era of policing that you're, you're entering into. Um, it's quite different than you know 20 years ago when I started. Uh, the expectations of the communities are, are different, um, and our role has changed quite a bit. You're out there. You're going to have to not just take and chase bad guys, take them to jail, do all the fun stuff. Of course, that's going to be part of your job. It always is a tool you have to use. But there's more and more expectations for you, community policing, working with the community, you know, to solve problems. And not all problems can be solved by taking somebody to jail or using your, your handcuffs or using your authority. Some of them, and you're expected from this point forward, is to come together with the community, the civilians, the other programs to solve those problems in a different way because it's not effective for every, every situation just to take somebody to jail. Sometimes it takes counseling, because sometimes it takes bringing families together, finding other resources, doing something else, looking for another way to solve the problems that our communities want us to solve. And they look to us, our leadership, to do that. So you have a big task ahead of you, but I know you can do it because you've been here and you've made it through this, uh, this process. So I want to leave you with um, a lesson I think is very relevant, not only for you as new police officers, but everybody in the police department, including myself. And if you don't take this lesson to heart, it can get you in trouble. Um, and if you do take it, it'll make your, your life much easier and, and make you be able to cope with things much better. So it's a little fable and I'll, 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 I'll read through this. So it's a, uh, starts out with the donkey and a tiger so the donkey says the tiger the grass is blue the tiger replied no the grass is green so this discussion heated up and the two decided to submit their arbitration or their argument um, and went before the lion the king of the jungle already before reaching the forest clearing where the lion was sitting on his throne the donkey began to shout his highness is it true the grass is blue the lion replied, true, the grass is blue. The donkey hurried and continued, tiger disagrees with me and he contra contradicts me, annoys me, please punish him. The king declared the tiger will be punished for five years of silence. The donkey, donkey jumped cheerfully and went on his way, content and repeating, the grass is blue, the grass is blue. The tiger accepted his punishment, but before, he asked the lion, your majesty, why have you punished me? After all, the grass is green. The lion replied, in fact, the grass is green. The tiger asked, so why are you punishing me? The lion replied, it has nothing to do with the question of whether the, the grass is blue or green. The punishment is because it is not possible for the brave and intelligent creature like you to waste your time arguing with a donkey. And on top of that, Come bother me with that question. So the worst waste of time is arguing with a fool, a fanatic who does not care about truth or reality, but only the victory of his beliefs and illusions. Never waste time on arguments that don't make sense. There are people who, no matter how much evidence and how evident we present to them, are not in the capacity to understand and others are blinded by ego, hatred, and resentment. And all they want to be is right, even if they are not. So the basic tenet of that is, when ignorance screams, intelligence is silent. Your peace and quiet are not worth more, are worth more. So you'll come in your career, you'll have somebody that's going to argue with you. They think you're, they're right. You know you're right, but is it worth your time? Sometimes it's not worth stooping down to their level and uh, probably talk to your, your training sergeants and the staff about contempt of cop. That kind of will get you in trouble. If you push the issue because you want to be right, even though it's not worth the time, that will get you in trouble. And sometimes you just have to move on. So that's my lesson for you and my, my piece of advice as you move forward in your career from this point forward. Congratulations to 12 of you. This is a momentous day for you in your whole life. You'll remember it forever. 
and the people that are here, your family, the pin your badge are obviously some that are very important to you and they'll remember it and it's a very honorable thing to be able to be here today and thank the families for all they've done uh, in supporting their officers, new officers. And I hope to see you out there. And if you ever need anything from me, you know where my office is at. Thank you for all the staff, the training academy, the captain, everybody, the president's office, all the leadership for the support. We couldn't do this here. And I was asked a couple times, what's my strategic plan for the department? This is what it is. Putting this police academy together and setting it up for the future where we're prepared to fill positions and move forward. It's taken a while. But as you can see, this is the result. And we're hoping to get more, and we're hoping to hire 40 for the next class. And if we can get all of those hired and, and through is my goal. And I challenge every class for everybody to pass, but you know they haven't filled that yet. But I'm hoping to soon. And as we move forward, we should be filling positions and fulfilling our, our mantra of being reliable, responsive, and trustworthy for our community. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Um, you know, there will be, you know, mistakes, you know, made uh, on us. Um, and uh, Navy SEAL Jacko Willink, extreme ownership. If you make a mistake, all up to it, then move on. But if you make a mistake, you take that blame. You take that blame. That's for each one of us. That's for everybody, you know, to, to you know, to think about these things and stuff like that. Um, okay, so now we have the uh, presentation of the police badge. So if I can have uh, Chief Philip Francisco and our division director, Jesse Dalmore, right up here. And uh, we'll do the... Um, Presentations of the badge. If I can have Sergeant Dan and Sergeant Williams come over to to help out presenting the um, uh, the officers their badge. All right, the uh, first to get their badge is going to be Anthony Laszlo. Tuli Lincoln. <laughs> David Watchman. Neil Nye.
Seibert Vandiver. Shane Davis. Kevin Charlie. JC Roan Elijah McCoy Gilbert Rogers, Jr. Caitlin Morris. William Smith Next, I would like the family member that's going to pin the badge on their new officer. Come on in. We'll spend a few minutes, give you some time with your officer. While you guys are waiting for that, look at look down at your badge badges. Look down at your badges. Look at it. Remember to stay, guys. Class 56, remember to stay. How much work it took into getting that badge. How much sweat and tears. How much it took from your family to be away from you during the time that you guys were able to be here at the academy. Thank your family. Thank your chairs, your muslinas, your, your nollies, your aunts and your uncles, your daughters, your children. Thank them for the sacrifice that they made for having you complete your goal, your dreams.
each other at first, but that's fine. Can you open this up? Don't hold your thing too much. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. People cut that fish too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so the family members, um, we're going to be doing the oath of office now. Uh, we can always take pictures, uh, you know, after we get this whole thing done. So we can have everybody, you know, move back. I want to present our honorable nomination judge, Cynthia Thompson. Cynthia Thompson. Yeah, I've uh, been a uh, not so though he had sergeant. I don't Kodoshi should that I don't hear that on scene to let she ya had hop on hinge. I do Belagana a bashish chin my dish gish ni a dash che Belagana a dash nalle. I hot out a son and shle. I do in that say it beda a snash hot teen got ha ya to hold ye do ado a ya. Shikhe. <laughs> 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 <laughs
question is how he had the Schneiderlet, Eugenia Charles Newton, Council Delegate, Aro in the Jesse Delmar, a hehe, Aro Myron Lizer, Vice President, a hehe, Aro in the Jonathan Nez, President of the Navajo Nation, a hehe, Aro in the Mr. Our Lieutenant Key, Kodo e Yahan Nan Nishinla, Ado in the um, uh, Captain Yazido, Ado in the Hashin Sogo e Yaha Kwaege Academy, Jin Dal Nishigi, uh, Ajin Hinan Nishidal, and again Hon Hal Shinabit and Dal Nishigi, Elo Hehen Hidishni Dole, Ado in the Chief, Hajula Chief Elo, uh, Chief Francisco, Nedo Hehen Dishni Dole. Aro in da e yaha kwaege shalchanin olanigi kwaege e yaha da yoltrahagi in tinanish e da saagi kwajan holjiz big e holjiz la e yaha nepes la shin hot a e yaha ben hit oje Navajo Nation police officer hot a shin e yaha dan hit tairo e ado hot a e yaha you work so hard in tinanish e yo e yaha a betzi loshi na anishigi shi te ado oltra ado naj di loa da shi ado an tsaha kees ado na hat a e aad e shi hud au e yaha bel kha hudit ego kud au e yaha bejjant da to kai gi te na anish a ko la e yaha ha shi te e shi il chune a no se lo ha e shi e yaha no se lo ni zi ado ye ha tze she e hud au Nasa Shunanish is indole, Shalau, a yaha, Shunanish doge, a salau dishle, Aro in the Akon, Shig a Beba, which yandole, baby get in shinto, the no ye hats, Hashint eshin ilchen, hot e ano selto, Aro in the e yahat, Hashint eshin e yaha, hat ishi, ik e ya, ik e grako, be in night higi. Benatje, could our yats at the coso, hot out in on the sheet that you are. A hot out the sheen on the speech and that all yard, a shalchen, not lenigico. Am trago a hand hit the schneedle. Ado hashin so go a yaha, not in tinigi. Am a hashin so go a yaha be, a yaha a jit eh. Codo sergeant ye had zee, do captain ye had zee. A hashin so go know who you are and where you're coming from ne. It's at the yeg or large at Bechel Nico, a yat a hala a yaha homa, a benantian holo, homa benantian, a yaha, homa sando beche, adet benantian, nigi homa, a yabiaho at dole, ado in the hoje, benantian, nigi, a yaha adje, hoje, a hoje and lenigi bama, do hoj beje, joe hon nalle dole, a adje benantian, nigi, adet it or lesco. A cohashin so go alt, aunt there, alt, a dead hot out a yaha, behaged it as a shalchen, no slenigi. I do in the hashin so go a yaha, de when not in tien gain, a deed, had she a yaha hot out behaged it, she had ishi been natchet sist at Jeraco, a quite not in tien, a yaha bear which a hot, a ne the quiz can that she, a quite hashin so go a cheese dot in. So you all have that. You all have these teachings, Rachin Mosanigi, you all have that. Lay down Huma and Hija and Huma son of Hashin Hik Ashi, Hut Albert Hard J, that's a Hut Al A. Yahan Lady and Hastra. Dole dot and John Go and Hashin be at the house at the Lako Hehe and Trago. Hut Al A. Biket now Hado, Hashin Sago A. Yaha Hut Al. A yaha ben hin ben an hit at nest han halchen ben da not hino. Could out at Badazol no con a yahan hitta, a yahan a has trado, con a yaha hashin sago, pen holyegi, a navhonation police badge, a hashin sago hut albich and hut al sado, ban hut al sago, ade a no slenigi, hashin out a bedag egit out consago, he hen hit the schneedle. Thank you very much. Ado in the hut out a yaha, hashin sogoshi. Yat echo, a yaha hut out, nahad at old little. Yat echo hut out codonet niche, a yaha banana should they do leave. And the message that um, Chief had presented hit home 
hashin soko e ya hati de um khat ishi pik ichagako ya at ehegi pik ichagako ado in da khunan nishiki pin na cha khaj shin khajagako hoge oji dot ela neta hoji tela and to make it worse sometimes it comes from your own relatives a ko e khagi gi nlate ya ta athi people will talk i do in the social media da na na bela you that eh what's go ojo shlash social media khala e ya ha yo ho yit ne it's a do thi ta hai de ne ko an ho i ahi da to nda kha a ko e benina ha shin so go hit a na ha shin e shin bela you de njono ko che jo on shin e ya te so you add echo to just in go go a it can turn on you but uh call bah no send up hot yeah I do in the deed people will talk I don't they'll be negative I don't in that the uh those situation that there's in the left so be careful of that I don't in the a uh need sad or horn just uh to shima sana hot aya in a shintian a hot nice the now I asked hit the less then lay that be the high was need or less but do consider and you need to understand what the yacht here adult had and that's exactly what chief has been um uh, has said to you this morning so bedathni that then him and he jen him sane he chain he na le hot ashi bin and he ni na sla do hot an and he e ado hot sla do shin hot a e ya ha ni he ni he jeda he ni he jeda tin ko um and I just want to say congratulations in Chicago. I do a yah quite get hot out a da outland. John no go shi da outland. Chief do hot out a yah had the kushi. This is I don't know how many years that this has happened since you came on board. Shushit bahas and sometimes back. I do remember doing an oath of office. A aj in lead. A ato pandemic hit neheda. A hot out a addition on this ishlan is do. I think one message that I want to present is this whole uh, the pandemic, Yigi COVID 19. And I see that, and people coming before me. There is a mental health issue out there. And I see Yego, Hashin Sogo, that he needs to come together and work on that. And so, in this case, he said, I said, I said, And one final thing, Miss Niagara, congratulations. It's how much I believed in you. You were so good. She was sitting on the committee for Save Our Students. It's an initiative that I started uh, with Chinle Unified School District in Chinle. Uh, she added her late on here, no celebrity chatting. Ah, she added to staff that uh, when I had a uh, call, I'm really happy for you. I'm very, very happy for you and your family. So thank you.
for uh, Sergeant Dan to come up with the paperwork and everything like that. <clears throat> Remember, Class 56, the oath that you're taking today in front of your family, in front of the Navajo Nation, and in front of God. Remember your oath. Okay, so let me give a little bit of instructions here. If you can go ahead and look at me. Um, uh, when I say I, and then that's I didn't I should care I that the don't need, and then state your name. Okay, I state your name, and then follow me again. Okay, um, this is the Navajo Nation Division of Public Safety. Navajo Police Department, Officer's Oath of Office. I. Raise your right hand, guys. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the laws of the states. Of Arizona, of Arizona, New Mexico, New Mexico Utah, Utah, and the Navajo Nation, and the Navajo Nation. That, I that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to, the to the same, and that I will defend, I will defend them, against them against all enemies, all enemies whatsoever. whatsoever. That, I that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially perform the duties, the duties of a police officer, of a police officer to, the to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Code of ethics. As a, officer, As a police officer of the Navajo Police Department, police Department I, will I will faithfully promise, promise that I will, that I will defend, defend the individual rights, the individual rights and enforce the laws, the laws in, a fair in a fair and impartial manner, and impartial manner. Be, truthful, be truthful honest, honest courageous, courageous and industrious and in in the, the performance of my duties, of my duties. Direct, all of my efforts direct all of my efforts to serve, to serve in the best interests in interest of the Navajo Police Department, Police Department. and the people of the, of the Navajo Nation. Loyally, Loyally support, support my supervisors, my supervisors and, refrain and refrain from any, from any destructive, criticism destructive criticism of my department, of my department or, fellow or fellow police officers. Remember at all times, all both, on both on and off duty, that I am a member of an honorable, of an honorable profession, profession and conduct myself, and conduct myself in, such a manner in such a manner as to reflect, as to reflect credit, upon credit upon the Navajo Police Department, the Police Department and, the and the Navajo Nation. Congratulations, Shalchen. Thank you, Judge. Thank you so much. If I can have, um, Officer Virgil Smith with the Kienta Police District, uh, Districts, come on up. Yate, uh, Skeshadana, Kwegi Hunosoniki. 
Virgil Smith in Shero, Navi Hobbesalan, Schlene, Kienta district there. Aro Natanska in a nest edge and enchle in the AI touch sheet, Neda Shaje, Torich E. Neda Shaje, Lisland, the Chanel, Aro in the AI Koe, Hen, Kirini Role, and then all the class uh, 56 or so. It's like to thank you guys, congratulations, and you know, uh, it's honored for me to be here to say a prayer. And a lot of good teachings today, a lot of good words today from the presenters that came up here. And as I was as as I was listening, you know, really good 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 teachings. And just like what our president Jonathan Nez had said too, uh, one main point is that we should you know keep our language, you know, learn it, our tradition, our culture, and you know, based off of that, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say a prayer with our with an our made native tongue and um just the way i was raised the way i was taught you know my my grandparents my mom dad and our elderly so with that i'm going to go ahead and say a prayer kore hajono le hajono le shmani san inda shitka yadis kitin chit yini hajono le hayos kate no de tish inda no tsu inda chas ke yas ni na sni de in the yes, it's not Jenny Totsil dog or sleep, the Bensart is not the little chol e. Coy any care when he had a tune slow nunk at the shin, coagi or ashy beach at coagi in the lay pinned up in your hill cardo in that hai ardo in that dahati ardo in the quay or ashy beach at corner in the ay coagi. Aya in a carchin, in he had a tune, lingy corner, aya has in so nabby hobbits a light long corner, aya. A I course in so bin it does lead all in the AI called a training academy. They shall call the chin leader a other because auto in the AI call a hot other a la quarter. Hashinzade a I call been tech case and lingy do in the AI yan tech case get a quarter a I call the stringy call at a I call a gibbish and lingy call but has auto courts of the bachelor car a quarter. In the Quaggy Besh behind it, Eggy Lock Corner, in the Sot So, in the AI Hashin So Sot Behad, and late A Vija Corner, Bina Adaro, in the AI Corn, Biga Hatta Horn, Nate Vija, in the AI Corn, as Yash, at Sun Lingy Lock Corn, get us a Dark Lock Corner, Ada Lock and Nutchin Long Corner, Yashabada Hosnado, Les Condi, and Yot, Eddie and Joe Potty Corner, in the AI Quaggy, ye had it, Eggy Lock Corner, be a Corner, Yashin So Corn. Nashan git a corner, Koba Hanegit a a hair lance and hard shay yes, Twido Sunny, the long hot aha de la, young git a stick in the corner yet, so does in ye pe, Hadelia. Che bounds no hot a yabesh, a yabeha or zero. In the dequa ebe had neat any gicon is son, condom him at it, any gicon here when he has did not joy hot a yabenash a hod. In the quaggy dot is Lingi Joy, ye quen and set. Jot I be able to hot it, eh, no corner. Auto in the ye quaggy patch and Lingi thought in the corner. Sergeant Billy, ye had see it look corner. See ye let our corner look home. In the babes hot it, eh, get our corn basses, oggy the corn babe, baby, 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 in dash char. In the ye corn, nan set corn dot, a ye look corner babes hot it, eh. In the ye quaggy, a ye has in so. Instead, it's on Lingi, Lock Corner, as it's what had it been, Lingi Corner, so does them behind the Yagi, our corner, a yaddy shing behind neat at the corner. Corn, she yaddy two, they know no corner, a yaddy corn, Shabada has yarrow less corner, net niche, this cargo de crab and none, she let her give you a corner. Yat as about a has yarrow corner, if not a whole gist or less the corner. In the corner, the ne in the yats of K, Jacay than long. A weird house, I don't lay sweet or sunny jet the house, I'll come with cotton that and set. Corner, a yay corn shin so corner, a baby cart teacher. Jotty no corner, a yay corn cart chin lingy corn. A yay dishy corn, ye had a dead egg at consola at lingy. Con Jonico Shabada has yarrow less corner. In the corn, a yay be a yay salabi salanigi, so corner, and then on clark eat our corner, a yay hoarder, nanish. I don't know, this is a car, it does. A hot egg on tar case 
in da e yai kon yat a yai kon cha da ot li ro le kon da ni zon go ye kon da yat a kon sha bai ba ta no son ro le kon di ni ot e di in jo pai in da e yai kon sha 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 kin da to sha 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 sa zin ge a kon da in da e yai kon ba na ta ni in da the districts that they're going to go back to so kon ba na ta ni da le ni ge ta le he ge so kon da in da the trainers so the yat a sha bai ba ta no son ro le kon da ni zon go e yai kon ye AI ye ye the house out of the corner but out of best or not it ah out of in the AI corner she so AI conquer in that best or least not corner a hot day in the chain so corner yard ash about a house yard all the songs in the corner the in your area job by corner call yard I I shop at the house on all this not corner in the staff at the training academy so it all she has not corner yard a corner shop on all the house yard all this not corner but call yard a house at all this not corner in the AI our headquarters called Wonder Rock, so called a yacht, a shabara, a yard or less, so called all the way up to from deputy of chief, other in the AI chief of police, in the our division director, all the way to our vice president, our our president, and then get so called our long committee order, so called a yacht, 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 Kore is kiss not a hot nishigi, ah, conjunco, is kiss not a nest or less, not honor. Yat ah, con, nahat aro less, conre, hajonigit, ah, con, aro nant ago, conre, ask, cause a I, compank, is canada hot at ero less, not so much, the conre hot a hajo pa insen, quite is shingit, quite a I class fifty six, linigi con, so does in Webaha sigi, quite so does in the closing prayer conre, yat ah, a I con, bevs not a has aro less. Ahun shende da ei ei kut ei tsor zeni be hasit oles. Bless all the families that came around to corner konkit da halon gi to kon to witness this occasion here, this special occasion here at this graduation. Kon yat ah ei ei shabe da no sor oles corner. Ahun tsor ei tsor zeni be hasit oles di be ati re shi che hojun asli oles kon he yos kate nu hude is nu tsun da chas ke ya asli da asli da hojun asli hojun asli hojun asli hojun asli. Thank you, officer. Class 56, take seats. Uh, just one thing to keep, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned to you guys. Um, Elijah McCoy, the new officer from Kenyatta, that's Virgil's daughter, stepdaughter, but he considers her uh, his real daughter. So, uh, you know, the, the traditions, the family, uh, part you know with naval police and stuff like that. That's important um, Your faith and strength You know that's gonna take you know to face the challenges out there You know when you go to work starting today as our new officers for the naval, naval nation police department some uh, some uh, When I be became a police officer, she never had no education I don't know if that kind of she knew about law enforcement she knew about what it takes, you know, for us to put on the badge and do our job out there. She didn't need. She yaj, that's a lesson. Ye go tzidlzen, ye go nzil. All that's in. All that arrowheads and chenichin deho. Ye go nubbits asen zin. Our job, what we're told to do. And I pray that you guys remember that, Class 56, that it's not about us. It's about the people that we serve. It's about doing right. It's about doing the good things out there, the whatevers. That just, this just doesn't, you know, go to you guys, but throughout everybody, through the nomination to the United States, the whole world, whatevers, the whatevers. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, do it. Do it every day. Class 56, congratulations. Congratulations. Um, take care of your family. Take care of each other. Take care of, of, your, of your children. Remember what I said? Look at me, guys. Remember what I said? You know, from here on, when you walk into Speedy's, 
and get your cup and get your donuts. Power rings. We call them power rings. We don't call them donuts. When you go in there and you're in uniform and that little girl, that little boy looks at you and that little boy and that little girl says, to see that, to see that, that little boy, that little girl having that admiration for each one of you guys of who you are, of who you represent. Never forget where you guys came from. Never forget that. No matter how far you get, one of these days you guys might be our chief of police, our division director, our deputy chief, our captains, lieutenants, our sergeants. But you never forget where you came from or what kind of work it took for you guys to earn this badge. Never forget that. I'm proud of you guys. I love you guys, and I will miss you guys. Sergeant. <laughs>